Just a recap, folks. Our target is Peter Shaw, the British Prime Minister. He was en route to the United States when he was abducted during their stopover in Hawaii. It is believed he is being interrogated by Russian enemy forces. Our intel says he is being held in this building. We go in through the roof where security is low. We get the Prime Minister and get out as soon as possible. People, this is an active war zone. Remember, anything can happen. You nervous, Card? No, sir. It's just Hawaii isn't exactly the safest place to be right now. The world isn't exactly the safest place to be right now. Officer Taylor, what about you? What is there to say? I'm here to save the Prime Minister. Fear is for the weak. scared, Dylan. Without fear, there can be no room for bravery. First specialized mission in the field and attempt to protect the Prime Minister? There's a lot of pressure on me. It's not that I'm afraid of dying or anything, it's just... I'm more afraid of failing the mission. I remember my first mission out in the field. I was a lot like yourself. Afraid of failure. But our leader told us something very important before we deployed. 
the battle is only truly lost the moment we decide to give up. Mr. Shaw, before you ask those two obvious questions, let me save you the trouble and give you their answers. My name is Natalia Bolshevik. I am here to discuss your terms of release. As for where we are, well, that's really none of your business. Terms of release? I don't think you know who you're speaking to. I'm the Prime Minister of Britain, and if you let me go now, then perhaps I won't have you and the rest of your bloody operators here killed! How's that for terms of release? Mr. Prime Minister, I am an ambassador of the Russian Federation, and the outcome of your time spent here, good or bad, is defined by me and only me. Understood? Good. We know you were traveling to the U.S. to solidify an alliance with them in the war. Now I'm here to tell you that that's a big mistake. I'm sure you want what's best for your people, and I can assure you that joining forces with the Americans, well, it's not in your best interest. I would have thought a sensible man like yourself would have figured out how weak they are. And you're here to convince me that working with Russia will be of my best interest. You see, now we're getting somewhere. 
It's that simple. All you need to do now is earn our trust, which can be done by just supplying us with a bit of information. And what, dare I ask, might that be? We heard of the Israeli Prime Minister's untimely death, and that his successor is working with a Mr. Damien Gray to form a peace treaty with Israel and the surrounding nations, including yours. Yet you declined their offer. Why? And what good is this information to you? Answer the question. Stop it, like that, Tim. Will you tell you what? What do they mention, Anthea? Lieutenant Commander Scott Bennett, this is Officer Carter and Officer Taylor. We're here to get you out safely. Oh, thank God! This might sting a little. We need to keep moving. Whatever happens, just stay with me, all right? Where's our evac? It should have been here by now. It's not coming. What are you talking about? What are you doing?
doing? We need to go. Carter, wake up! Where's the Prime Minister? He's gone, Dylan. Scott took him. I just don't understand. Why would Scott do this? He wasn't who we thought he was. That's why. I didn't think that he was that kind of person. Yeah, well, he was. I thought he was better than that. I guess you were wrong. Look. I'm sorry, all right? I'm just not really good with trusting people. It's like you can choose to think positive and see the good in people all you want. But the truth is, evil always outweighs the good, even with the people you think you're the closest to. Is that what happened to you? Unlike most little girls my age, I actually enjoyed going to school. And I hate whenever it ended because I'd have to go home. My dad, he was an excessive drinker. And I hardly ever saw him. Not that I wanted to anyway. At night, my mom would tuck me in bed and lock the door. And in the middle of the night, I would hear my dad come home, followed with banging and yelling from downstairs. In the morning, before I went to school, my mom would be on the couch where she was from the night before with a black eye and a bloody nose, always a new bruise on her arm. It had become a routine. He'd beat her until she was a bloody mess, then kiss her and say he was sorry. Yeah, right. 
When I was eight, I had come home from school and my mom had a suitcase packed for me. We didn't know where we were going, but we hopped on a bus and got as far away from there as possible. That night, when we were at a motel, he found us. Before he broke in, my mom hid me under the bed. And from there, I watched as he beat her until I couldn't even recognize her anymore. But this night was different from any other night because she didn't get back up. The only person you can trust is yourself, not even your squad commander. Look where that's gotten us. It's over. The prime minister is gone. We failed. No. It's not over. We can still finish this. How? We don't even know where they went. I have an idea. Location. All right, well, we gotta move fast. It's not working. Hey, Carter. Think you can drive one of these? Here, there's what you asked for. Mr. Watanabe, I'd like to commend you for your work, but would also like to ask one more favor. That wasn't part of the deal.
ベネットさん、もう少しおたあなたのことについてお尋ねしますか。Mr. Bennett, I know this is asking just a little bit more of you, but you need to see this from my perspective. あなたがあなたの国のために一生に働いているのをわかりますか。You're working as a mole for your country, and you expect me to give you my trust that easily? In order to assure the safety of your country, I will require the location of all United States nuclear weapons. And how do you expect me to get that kind of information? So, how do you expect me to get that kind of information? You're able to get the Prime Minister. I'm sure you can think of something. Mr. Bennett, do you have a plan? Mr. Wouldn't you like to know? I should have taken you two out while I still had the chance. But you didn't, Scott. You couldn't. Why? Why do this? There's no other way. The only way we're going to survive this war is if we cooperate with the other nations. You know that. So we just surrender? Is that it? Welcome to the real world, Officer Carter. <laughs> Not afraid to hit a little girl. Neither am I.
Drop it. You gonna shoot me, Carter?
Mr. President, as I'm sure you're aware, there's a new Israeli Prime Minister who's engaged in peace talks with surrounding Middle Eastern countries and other nations, such as America. I'm here to urge you not to get involved with with good reason. Really now? Damien. Damien? Where's the president? Not here. Shall I dispose of the body, sir? Yes. Thank you. And be sure there are no slip-ups this time. I hate having to clean up after myself. שאלתה אותי קודם. התשובה שלי נשארה זהה. ישראל תישאר מטרלית במלחמה הזאת, ולכן אין צורך להצטרף להסכם השלום הזה שאתה מדבר. היועצים שלך היו אומרים אחרי. ובכן אני? לא לכם אני? החשנות שלך בעניין, הזירה גורמת לי לשאלת. הכוונות האמיתיות שלך, דמיין. אני אגיד עוד פעם, הדרך היחידה שבה תקבל ישראל יצטרף. לאמנה הזאת היא על גופתי המיטה. Completely understandable. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a meeting with the president. <laughs> 